to tell people that watching three one minute videos on social media or to tune in on a live stream um, without like, I mean, if we were in a pandemic, just to tune in on a live stream in general. Um, I think that's dangerous and misleading. I think that nothing will ever replace like in-person interactions as humans we were made to do that and the church body is supposed to be connected in a way that where we're all in the same space there's like a very blurry line between oh i want to make content and i want it to be good and helpful for people or like oh i want this to become super popular so that people so that i'll become and achieve this kind of higher status and that line isn't necessarily for any it, you we can't really discern it, especially with like Christian TikTok. And I think that's also probably what like makes it really complicated and hard with like celebrity pastors and stuff. It's like, to what extent are they trying to court this kind of attention? And to what extent is it, are people just flocking to them because they um, like find spiritual like meaning in it? Okay. When I was a kid, I was just What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Social Media Revivalist, where we hear stories of how Christians online are bringing about real world revival. And today I'm really excited uh, because our guest actually wrote an article in Christianity Today. Um, she she was really interested in what was going on in this Christian online social media world um, and wanted to get the word out uh, to to people who might be uh, not super in the loop with this. And so she has some really, really great thoughts for us. Um, her name is Rachel Saw, and she's coming all the way out here from San, San Diego at UCSD. Um, so, Rachel, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, yeah, we're uh, we're excited for you. I know Rachel and I. We've had a conversation before, um, and it's it was a really really fantastic conversation. Kind of getting at uh, a little bit of different perspectives of what's going on in this Christian uh, online world, um, and you have some incredible thoughts. So I'm really excited. Uh, but would you, before we hop into it, would you give us a little bit of uh, tell us a little bit more about you, um, some of your kind of how you got a little bit interested in this topic um, and all that world. For sure. Um, so uh, like you said, I am a senior in college right now, finishing up my undergrad at UC San Diego. Um, and honestly, this was, so all this happened last summer. Um, I was kind of bored. So, and, and I've always enjoyed writing. I'm studying literature and writing. Um, and so I was kind of looking for more opportunities and ways to write. And also because it was the pandemic and um, there's only so many movies you could watch. I was also spending a lot of time on social media. That was the summer that TikTok kind of blew up. And so I think it was just really interesting because um, I would get like, it wouldn't be a lot, but very occasionally I would get like Christian TikTokers pop up in my For You page. And because I was just actively thinking of articles to try to write um, and pitch to publications, I was like, oh, this could be like a thing because I don't think anybody's written about it yet because TikTok is still kind of, people are still, I guess, gradually becoming aware of it. Um, so I pitched the story idea, um, I think at some point like in July, and then um, I wrote it over the course of a couple of months and then it got published in the November issue of Christianity Today, which is super cool. Um, and But in the process, like that whole uh, of like researching it and speaking to people in interviews and stuff, it was just really interesting because I realized that there was a lot of stuff that had been rooted in history, like what was happening on TikTok was nothing new. <laughs> and I had kind of done that before, but I didn't realize the extent to which like it really was not anything new until I kind of read a little bit more about it and spoke to some people. And so, yeah, that was just a very interesting process. And it got me interested in the history of like American Christianity, American evangelicalism ever since then. So, yeah. it's hmm, awesome. So cool. So exciting. Uh, that's great. And actually, so so that was one of the things that I thought was so interesting, Rachel, about um, what you presented and, and the the parallels that I think you saw and brought into this conversation, both in our conversation together, but also in the article that you wrote um, in terms of the parallels that you saw with American Christianity in general uh, and the history of American Christianity um, but also maybe some of the things that are happening in culture. Um, so would you would you just talk about that a little bit? I think it would be really, really interesting for our listeners um, to hear more of your thoughts on that. 
Yeah, for sure. So part of the angle of the article is um, I took a look at some of the more like populist and democratic, I guess, threads that had been woven throughout American history. I mean, obviously America was founded on just the idea of kind of rebellion. <laughs> so we just like broke apart from the British. You're we like, we're gonna do our own thing. And I hadn't really thought about it before, but that kind of mindset and all the political kind of um, leanings and affiliations with that had definitely leached into the way that people practiced religion. Because I think previous to that, it was like the church of England um, or something like that. Yeah. Um, and there was a lot of like institutional baggage that went along with it. So there's like, you know, dioceses, like bishops and whatever. And part of what happened with the American Revolution is that when people were like, we don't want to work with this government anymore. We want to set up our own thing. We want to be like an adv advocate for the common man. That mindset also leached into the way that they set up churches. And so, <clears throat> excuse me, there was less of a a an emphasis on like institutional authority and like scholarship and whatnot and more on what can the common man like read into the bible or what can the common man i guess discern it was very much the mindset of like do your own research read for yourself think for yourself be your own person and not to say that that's like necessarily a bad thing because i think that like reading in the common vernacular like super um important and helpful but it also kind of just kind of threw out a lot of stuff that had been very helpful in the past, in the past in terms of um, scholarships and like read scholarship and reading the Bible and everything to do with that. And so I thought that it was really interesting because th that idea of democratization and populism, this was all, this all comes from a book called The Democratization of American Christianity by Nathan O. Hatch. And that kind of leans into the idea of the internet as well, because the internet as a whole kind of gives everybody a voice. Mm -hmm. And that's like a tool to, to wield um, for the betterment, I guess, or it's positioned as a tool to wield for the betterment of democracy. Just this idea that everybody can say something, everybody has input. Um, and so I think that because of social media, that idea of like populism and democratization is also definitely like leached its way into the ways that we use social media and also the ways that Christians use social media. And so talking to people who were using TikTok like as that kind of platform, as a way of in some sense like empowering just the average person, um, it was really, really interesting to me and just to notice those historical parallels. Yeah, that's uh, that's huge. I think one of the like one of the points that you're making here that really sticks out is, you know, that especially because in today's world, like it was one thing back, you know, in the 17, 18, early 1900s to have, you know, OK, now there's there's almost like a little bit more of a I can I can take this on myself. I can learn scripture and, you know, interpret it however I want. But now there, it's almost taken to another level, like you're saying, where we have the internet and everybody has a phone and they can say whatever they want and have whatever thoughts that they feel like might be, sure, this sounds like something I should share. Um, and so there's, there's like this, this expanse of everybody wants to share their thoughts and um in some ways i think there's there's been some really good that really good stuff that's come out of it but i think also in in another way there has also there's just danger um in that and i know uh you you spoke to elijah elijah lamb um and we had him on this uh podcast as well and one of the things that i heard from you but also from him is that there's uh you know there's no church government there's no uh there's no kind of like um um what's the word I'm looking for? There's no, uh, I'm blanking. Uh, there, there, there's no accountability for, for people who are posting online because it's like, well, it's the internet, so I can do what I want. I can say what I want. Um, and, and there's there in that there has been definitely some sort of danger that's, that could come out of that. Um, so any, yeah, any thoughts specifically on that, uh, idea of like, okay, anybody can share whatever they want. What have you seen come out of that as well from, from kind of what you wrote and things that you've seen online? Yeah, for sure. I think there was maybe a small part in the article that talked about false teaching and heresy, which I think is something that is definitely an issue. I would also probably say that the, the platform 
of TikTok itself and just the limitations of it. It's only one minute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the platform itself, because it's only one minute, it it's very sometimes hard to communicate a lot of theological depth and truth in one minute, especially in video form. Yeah. And I think that that could leave also a lot of room open for interpretation because on the internet, as with any medium, there's like the, um, the creator side so the creator can kind of do whatever, but then it's also about how the user receives it as well. Mm -hmm. And so I think that the limitations of the platform um, also make it so that people who also might not have as much of an idea, a clear idea of how to communicate things well and properly, um, it kind of lends a kind of legitimacy to them as to somebody who might be like, who might have a better understanding of theology. And I think that's maybe one of the dangers of it. Um, sorry, I might have gotten sidetracked from the original question. Um, but I think that there's definitely a lot of room for account or there's not that much room for accountability just because it lends everybody the same amount of legitimacy and the algorithm kind of just goes, the algorithm is obviously not looking for like orthodoxy. It's just kind of looking to see what people will, what the most people will like. And I think because it just caters to that, there's, um, yeah, there's just a world in which it just is not, gonna be good, especially if people who are on the opposite side who are receiving this, these videos are easily led. And so I think that's just something that people need to be cognizant of when you're looking on TikTok, when you're looking on social media, reading a caption, reading a tweet, reading a Facebook post, watching a TikTok video, that's not the same thing as like reading your Bible. That's not the same thing as like going to church. Um, and at the same time, like reading, what, making a TikTok, writing a Facebook post, writing a caption, that can encourage people like online. But I would say that that's not not to place more weight on it than it there should be. And if there is like false teaching, and um, or if there is something that was like not clear that could be misinterpreted, also being very careful with the way that you engage with the people who do that mm -hmm. because it could turn into a whole lot of drama. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, like in the Christian sphere, like there has also been like a lot of drama as well. And so I think that there's a lot of like rules of engagement and whatnot that come, come into play. And it, whereas in a church, you would kind of understand, you would like approach the person, but because like these users might not be part of the same church or like might not even know each other, and some of it, like, at any point, either person could make it public. It's just, it's it's a free-for-all. So treat it like a free-for-all. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. Um, and, and I think one thing kind of going off of that um it was it was really interesting in our previous conversation Rachel, you were saying that a lot of people well so there's christianity is is a big part of the culture like it's uh it's it's prevalent it's not just you know a very small niche group like sure it is a little bit of a niche group but it's but it's pretty big like especially in the US especially in America like um there's it, it, yeah, there, it, there's a lot of things going on with it. There's actually sometimes a lot of money in it. There's a lot of uh, like fame and like the whole like celebrity pastor culture. There's, there's a lot of that going on. And, um, and unfortunately, recently we've seen kind of the downsides of that with, you know, people like Carl Lentz and Ravi Zacharias and uh, just like prominent leaders who, you know, I, personally I loved and respected and learned so much from. Uh, and then to come off on the other side of this and be like, okay, like <laughs> let's, let's maybe take a step back uh, and, and figure out, figure out how, like how we should look at this. Um, but, but on that point, like, you said something so interesting of like, there's an, there's almost an incentive, uh, for people to hop into this world of Christian, um, just like Christ Christianity and to talk about their faith. Um, would you, would you share a little bit more about your thoughts on that? Of course. Yeah. I think, like you said, um, American Christianity and American evangelicalism it's a niche group, but also not super niche because there's like millions of people who affiliate themselves with Christianity in the United States. And so even though there's sometimes there's this position of like, oh, like we're like a smaller group, we need to like 
I don't know. Um, but it's actually quite big. And I think the I sometimes like the point that I try to make is that movies like God's Not Dead, God's Not Dead one, two, three, four, ten, because they're making like a million of them, they <laughs> would not be made if people were not showing up to watch them. Because I think the reason why they're being made is just because there's lots of money involved, like you said. Mm -hmm. And so there definitely is a certain amount of clout to be begotten, I guess, from this whole idea. And I think that's something to be cautious of. I think for anybody, like whether you're a Christian or not, whether you're trying to become a Christian TikToker or not, is that the internet and social media and the algorithms are intentionally created to make you attach too much value to your likes, your followers, whatever. Um, and there's like like the social dilemma is a documentary that got super popular that really talks about that. And there's like lots of articles online of people who are just saying like, yeah, social media is kind of it changing the way like our brains work. Um, it's using like artificial intelligence to try to anticipate what we want so that everything that um, we want or need is in front of us. And simultaneously, especially with TikTok, um, there's such an emphasis on anybody can go viral. There's that idea of like virality and everybody, I think everybody at this point probably knows somebody who has gone at least like marginally viral. And I think that idea of um, anybody could be a celebrity, anybody could be a social media star, anybody could be an influencer. Like Charlie D'Amelio, she got like how many million followers like in one year? Like I think everybody or a lot of people look at that kind of success and be like, I want that. And so we're incentivized um, inherently to make content to that we think will try to perform well. And as a result, obviously we're definitely performing for an audience. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's always interesting um, to consider, especially when people are obviously trying to become influencers or trying to make content. Um, there's like a very blurry line between oh, I want to make content and I want it to be good and helpful for people or like, oh, I want this to become super popular so that people, so that I'll become and achieve this kind of higher status. Mm -hmm. And that line isn't necessarily for any, it, you we can't really discern it, especially with like Christian TikTok. And I think that's also probably what like makes it really complicated and hard with like celebrity pastors and stuff. It's like, to what extent are they trying to court this kind of attention? And to what extent is it, are people just flocking to them because they um, like find spiritual like meaning in it. But I think that's always something to be cognizant of and to consider, especially like as casual social media influencer or not influencers, but as casual social media like users, to what extent am I doing this to get likes? To what extent am I doing this just because I want to do it? To what extent am I doing this to try to bring glory to God, so to speak. So I think that's always something to consider. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's huge. And I, and I remember here's a, I'm just going to read, read a quick quote from, from what you wrote in your article. And by the way, for those of us who are listening, um, the article that Rachel wrote, it's called meet the, the TikTok generation of televangelists. And I love that line. Cause it's, it's, uh, it's totally like, this is, Televangelism was a huge thing, and now it's almost like there's a shift here that's happening. Um, actually, before I ask this question, Rachel, what? Yeah, what do you see? How do you see? Because we, we're talking a little bit more about parallels here, um, but how do you see the parallel here of what's happening online with the parallels that happened in the age of televangelism, specifically, you know, back in back in the days when that was a big thing? What do you What do you see with with that? First, I would like to say I hope that nobody in the TikTok world is as corrupt as some of those televangelists yeah. <laughs> were and are. Um, I did I did read something um, for research for the article and just like chronicling all the stuff they did. At one point, I think it was um, yeah, like the bakers. They had a whole theme park um like a, a christian yeah and i was like what the heck <laughs> i was like i kind of want to go just to see what it's like <laughs> anyway um i think some of the parallels obviously there's the idea of using a new medium to reach the masses mm -hmm. so for televangelism um that was like radio and television and just trying to 
I think that that idea of like trying to reach the most people that kind of stems back to the great awakening mm-hmm. um just that idea of like revivalism just trying to make the most converts yeah. um and also a lot of times like their motivations and it clearly came out later would be like at money um just to get the, to the most people to convert the most people to make the most money yeah. um not saying that's necessarily what was happening with any of the TikTok people that I interviewed because at this point TikTok is still new and it's like hard to monetize on it but um I think in terms of like the idea of like the Christian social media influencer obviously it's capitalizing like on new medium obviously it's a really great way to reach a lot of people and there's kind of that marketing language that sometimes infiltrates things which is like the idea of conversions like in terms of like converting people to Christianity but also conversions in terms of getting people to like click on certain links and follow the trail join the community be part of like the group And I think that was definitely leaching into some of the conversations that I had with people, which I thought was really interesting, um, but also was not surprised by just because that's kind of what it's always been. So yeah, like there's definitely, it's, it's kind of, it's basically the same thing. We're just a little bit, we're just not, we're just like in the 21st century now. (laughs) Yeah. Right. And, and I think the other difference maybe slightly is that now, now anybody can hop into that televangelism world. It's not, you know, you don't have to have the, the money or even like, um, you know, you don't have to have spent years teaching or preaching or whatever in order to get into it. It's like, I'm it. I'm a 15 year old and I have my phone. Um, but you're, you're totally right. Uh, and, and one thing that I loved again, just about like, so I, I was part of, um, a few organizations, uh, just doing youth ministry. And one of those organizations was really big on counting numbers. Like, okay, how many, how many kids came to, you know, our, our gathering? How many, how many, uh, salvations did we see? How many people signed up for this or that, or how much money are we, you know, are we fundraising? And so, uh, I, I found it really interesting, um, the way that you, again, like just seeing parallels of like American Christianity and American evangelicalism, maybe even more specifically, um, and, you know, it's it's kind of infiltrated into this culture uh, because it is part of the culture of like, let's count numbers, let's count followers, let's count salvations, let's count uh, all, you know, there's just a lot of, of numbers, which, you know, there, I'm sure there is definitely like, you, you know, it's helpful to keep track. It's helpful to know, uh, even, even if it's for the fact of like, all right, if we know who's, who's saying yes, or who's committing or who's giving, we can follow up and we can reach out. Um, but that can also totally come with an element of, again, like there's just a, a little bit of a danger to it. And, um, why, like you're saying, like, are we doing it for Christ or are we doing it for, for clout? Um, like Elijah said, when I was talking to him, he's saying there's a difference between some people who are doing it for Christ and people who are doing it for clout. Um, so yeah, do you have any more? I mean, I'm, this is all me regurgitating what you said. So these aren't my own words. I think this was an incredible thing, but anything else that you would add to that? I think I would just say it's probably really hard to figure out why you're doing things. And I think whenever, like, obviously, whenever we see, like, big people, I guess, like, fall out or there's just, like, a lot of stuff that's happening, I think it's, like, an accumulation of, like, very small steps. So it's not like a one day you wake up and you decide, like, you really just want to do this for the money. Like, I don't, yeah. Like, and so I think because there's that, it's really hard to, figure out your own motivations it's even more hard to figure out other people's motivations and to a certain extent I don't think it's within our right or our duty to have to monitor those um and so I think it just is helpful just to be on guard in general um to understand that there are these systems in place that are going to make us do and view things in a certain way regardless of if we think we're impervious to that um like I I sometimes I go on Instagram I'm on or TikTok and I'm like this is not affecting me at all like I am I because I know how it's working like like I can do whatever I want but that's like 100% not true um I was rereading part of culture making by Andy Crouch and he was saying that we are oftentimes far more influenced by the culture around us than we can change it. Mm-hmm. And I think that having that cognizance and that humility, um, especially when going into just the internet's like a vacuum. So just going into places like that where we're so easily changed without even realizing it, I think that that's important to understand and to know and to be, 
I guess, safeguard against, but also to know that like in a certain sense, it is inevitable and it's not necessarily bad, but that's just is what it is. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so like going into that idea of like motivations and like hot and stuff like it, and it, it's all just very, it's all just like cultural. Um, like obviously a lot of these are like biblically rooted, but we're Americans living in 2021. That's gonna be a completely different experience than anybody, like maybe a Christian who's like living in Japan in like the 18th century. If, yeah, so, I, I, so it's, it's really, the, these kinds of things and conversations and um, I guess evangelistic things are really just products of our times. So mm -hmm. treating it as such. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think one of the cool things about our faith is that church has always been, um, you know, a, an essential piece of our faith. And um, obviously like being the church and uh, being a body of Christ. And now in 2020, that has looked a little bit different with COVID and uh, things like that going on. Um, but there's still an element of community and there's still an element of we're, you know, we're doing our faith together. And I think uh, one of the things that at least, you know, from, from what I've noticed in, in some ways, there has been, uh, a little bit of a gap that exists now because, you know, there's, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, watch these things online, or I'm going to like learn some of these Christian things online. Um, and I'll grow in my faith. And, uh, and especially with COVID, it's, it's become a lot harder to, to bridge the gap between, you know, doing things online and watching and learning online, which is good. Um, but also like the, there's a big, very big, big element missing here, um, which is the church in a lot of ways. And, um, and, and so I, I'm going to read this, this quote, and I'll come back to it, um, that you wrote. You said, a major challenge for TikTok is that no one is really guiding and learning, uh, guiding that learning and understanding. Christian TikTok is not a church. Um, and so with that, you know, with that gap existing there a little bit and, um, and, and, you know, I think in the context of what you wrote here, we're talking about, you were talking a little bit more about, you know, the, the accountability that exists within a church. Um, but I think there's also like that statement is rings true in a lot of different ways. Um, do you think, how, yeah, how, how, how have you seen um, this element of like TikTok um, in some ways, some you know, people, people are seeing that as, as the resource rather than church, um, being a resource. How have you seen that, uh, play out? And also, do you think that there is a solution to it? Yeah, for sure. So I think, um, when I was researching, there were, there's TikTok churches, like there's people who live stream and call it TikTok church. Um, and so I think I always thought that was interesting because I was like, even though this is not technically like a church body, this is not, actually anything different than what I was doing at that point, which was tuning into church like online, yeah. which I thought was fascinating. But obviously there is that in-person element um, mm. that is like so essential to the local church. Mm. Um, and sorry, what was the question again? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I think I think you're kind of like hitting on it, but basically like how, <laughs> yeah, what, what do you see that exists in this like TikTok is not a church. How do we, is, is there a solution bridging a gap between, you know, okay, learning online and connecting online. Um, and even maybe in your own experience now with COVID of like, okay, church is online. How, how can we bridge a gap um, for those who are maybe connecting online and learning online, but then there isn't that communal aspect of it. Um, I know you didn't necessarily go into this in your article, but just wanted to ask, see if you had thoughts on it. <laughs> I mean, the only uh, the only straightforward thing that I can really think of um, is to just continue to encourage people to go to the local church. I think that's kind of like a big emphasis that I've just kind of heard growing up my entire life. And there's not, not going to be any replacement for it. Um, and that kind of might be the hardest thing to like communicate to your audience because that takes a lot of work. You have to encourage them to find a church and mm -hmm. to figure out how to get there and to figure out how to get invested and whatnot. But I think that to tell people that watching three one minute videos on social media or to tune in on a live stream um, without like, I mean, if we were in a pandemic, just to tune in on a live stream in general, um, I think that's dangerous and misleading. I think that 
nothing will ever replace like in-person interactions as humans we were made to do that and the church body is supposed to be connected in a way that we're, we're all in the same space I think the idea of the body kind of connotes that and so I think that that's probably the message that I personally would ask people to communicate or if I god forbid was a Christian TikToker like that <laughs> that's what I would try to maybe say um but I think that yeah so I think that's probably just the most straightforward way I think that's the most conventional way I wish that there was a world in which people could just be like oh we should create our own church or like what if all the churches in America like united and we all united in this one like live stream or like even the idea of like virtual reality like I don't know maybe that could be a thing like if you're like I don't know (laughs) but like we're not there yet yeah so I, I, I would, yeah, I think being in person um, when it's safe, obviously, um, that's the way to go. Mm. That's, that's such a good, uh, that's such a good word. Uh, such a great encouragement. Um, this is one of the things that uh, I know this, this podcast hasn't been released yet, but um, I spoke when I was speaking with Elijah, that was one of the things that I, he and I had, you know, this moment of like, man, there is this gap that exists. And how cool would it be if someone was bridging that gap? Like, how cool would it be if there are people who are in maybe, maybe Christians, maybe pastors, maybe youth pastors that are connecting to these young people who are, you know, having live streams and people, you know, sending them questions and asking them, oh, okay, I want to take a step in my faith. How can I, you know, pursue this a little bit more? Because yeah, some of them, some of them get like tons of DMs and people are like opening up to them. And, um, and so I think there's, there's an element of like, okay, first of all, a a, a person who has like 600,000 followers plus is not going to be able to get back to every single person. They're not going to be able to connect with them uh, personally in a way that maybe if they were connected to a local church or a local youth pastor or pastor, um, they'd be able to do that. And um, so that's one of the things that I'm thinking about and um, talking about and trying to figure out, okay, is is there a way that we can almost like create a resource um, for some of these people who are online um, and say, Hey, I know you don't know, you know, a pastor in Boston and a pr- pastor in Chicago and a pastor like all over the world. Um, he, he, here's maybe a resource, a list of names of like, if you, if you have somebody reach out from the Boston area, here's a church that they can go to. Here's a pastor that they can connect to, uh, on a deeper level. Um, and so who, who knows where this will go. It's, it's kind of like an idea right now. And I'm, I'm like drafting out an email to see, uh, who might be interested, uh, if, if people are interested in this. Um, but I think you're totally right, Rachel, like that is such a big thing. And, uh, and man, I, I think it would make a huge difference, um, in the whole world. Like if there is people, like if there are people who are interested in the, in the worlds and they, they're seeing these videos and they're like, okay, like you've, you've piqued my interest. I want to, I want to pursue this a little bit more. How cool would it be if they could get connected to the local church? Like you're saying, how cool would it be if these online Christians were actually promoting, uh, a church uh, more so than, you know, uh, maybe even their own platform. And, um, and I know some of them maybe have, you know, they're not necessarily going after it for themselves, but, but still, how can we promote, go to a local church, get plugged in? That is a huge part of our faith. Um, so yeah, just like sharing my thoughts with you there as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, I think it would, in terms of like TikTok, Christian TikTokers, like I would say like, if you're a Christian, you're on TikTok, you don't have to do all that stuff. Mm-hmm. I think because like the profiles are so tied to like the people, like some people make comedy content, some people make um, like event. So like with my article specifically talking about like the evangelism, but um, which I think like, I think that idea is like so interesting. The idea of like having a resource page for people to go to and to try to connect with. Um, I mean, I feel like that's probably the most straightforward way to like try to connect people to in real life. Um, I I think a lot of people in my circles like to use, or or there's like lists of churches, so like nine marks. Um, Yeah. And so I think that that's, that it sounds like it would kind of be like a list or a directory for people who are just like on the internet, Mm -hmm. um, which I think is 
yeah, I think that that's really interesting. Maybe that that's where things are headed. <laughs> Maybe who knows? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, totally. Um, so so I know we've we've kind of like hit on maybe some of the dangers, some of the, some of the things of like, okay, here's some room for improvement in terms of the Christian online world. Um, but with that, on the, on the other side of things, are there, are there ways that you've seen um, positives come out of this? Are there ways that you've seen this um, potentially have some good, even in some of your conversations and some of your interviews that you've done with, um, with people who, who are doing this online? Yeah, I mean, well, this conversation's coming out of it. So <laughs> I think that's good. I think the ability to have conversations with people and to discuss these kinds of things is really interesting. Um, I think something that I care about a lot is like context and critical thinking. And so I think that um, with the opportunity to write articles like these and to talk to people, um, I'm really thankful that I was able to have the chance to do more research and to um, like I said, contextualize things for people. Um, and I hope that people who read my article took something good away from it. Um, obviously, like, I think that there's definitely like evangelistic um, potential, like within social media platforms. Um, I think with social media in general, just the ability to connect with people or like connect with people, um, although it's in a limited capacity, I think that's always good um, just to have conversations with, um, especially because we're just, more isolated than we were like before and not meeting as many new people. Um, I think that I've been able to just over like Facebook or just like text, um, just talk to people that I've never, or that I, I wouldn't run into like on the street randomly. And I have more time to do that. Mm -hmm. And so I think with platforms like TikTok, um, yeah, inspiration for more conversations like these, um, some evangelistic value in it. I don't know how much it would be, um, but at least some, I think it would just come with a lot of caveats. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, definitely like TikTok's a platform for innovation and whatnot. And even though like innovation itself is like something that is rooted in like history, um, it's definitely always interesting to think about and to know about. Yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic. That's awesome. Uh, well, Rachel, loved your thoughts. Thank you for hopping on and sharing. Uh, if people want to connect with you online, uh, I know you've got a website and social media. How, how can people connect to you uh, to just like hear more from you and, and see what you're doing? Yeah, for sure. Um, so on Twitter, I am at R R A C H E L A L I S O N. -N. So it's like Rachel Allison, but then there's like a double R at the beginning and a double N at the end. So nice. um, I love Twitter. I think Twitter is my favorite platform. So if you want to follow me there, you can get my random thoughts on like super random things. I don't post anything like super substantial usually. Um, <laughs> and then I, my Instagram is at Rachel A. Saw. So those are my, and if you want to see what I've done, uh, my website is rachelsaw.com. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Thank you so cool. much for having me. This was really fun. Yeah, no, it was, it was awesome. It was so good to get your thoughts a little bit different than the usual, but it was so good. Like really, really like such, such good thoughts. And I think, um, probably, probably challenging to, to some of our regular listeners and watchers. Um, so thank you for hopping on here and we'll link kind of all of your, all of your stuff that you just shared in the, in the show notes and the link notes downstairs, down, down below wherever downstairs is. <laughs> um, uh, but thanks again. And thank you guys for listening. Thank you for watching. Thanks for joining us. Uh, and Hey, if this, if this content has been helpful to you, uh, one thing that I would ask, you can subscribe, you can like, you can share, you can do whatever. But, but the, the, the one thing I'd ask is if this is helpful, if this is interesting, send it to a friend, uh, let him know your thoughts on it and here have more conversations just like Rachel and I are having about this. Um, because I think, um, conversations like this, um, can really inspire change and can really inspire some really incredible things in our world. So thanks again for tuning in and we'll see you guys next time on Social Media Revivals. Okay, when I was a kid, I was just young and naive. I wore my heart on my